guys, good evening. Ishwar Pal, if you're feeling hungry, why didn't you have dinner before the class? All right. All my bandhas and bandhis and friends and countrymen and Romans and everybody. Yes, guys, welcome to the class. This session is going to be another exciting session. We are going to discuss primary purpose and main idea. Kya hota hai primary purpose? Kya hota hai main idea? We are going to find out in a few minutes from now. But first, I request you all to settle down and feel quite relaxed. Good evening, Mahira. Motashim, you are an ITMAT aspirant. Of course you can, Motashim, because this is going to be a very basic session. Primary purpose, main idea, aapka har exam mein aata hai. So this will help you tremendously. Oh no, sorry, Ishwar, please. I wish I could extend you biryani from here. I really wish, because I can imagine how hungry you must be. Jaldi jaldi karenge Ishwar and I promise I won't bore you at all in the session. Okay? You will forget your hunger for some time. Pratik, good evening. Manish, hi. Good to see you, Manish Singh. All right, Chaloji, without further ado, let's get cracking. The heat has ebbed, as I had mentioned this morning also. Even at a slow speed, the fan is fine. I hope the same at your end. Uh, Miss Pallavi, I'm good. All right. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Shabana Shahab, your educator for VARC. I have been with an academy for almost three years now. And overall, I've got about 13 years of experience to my name. So I believe you can, I be, believe I can help you a little bit with your VARC and you are in safe hands. Guys, if you have not yet taken a subscription, you really need to do so because you can learn a lot in my classes. So please come over and we can have quite a lot of fun with VARC. Subscription lene ke liye, you have to just use my referral code Shabana Lai. Rim Jim Dube. Okay. Prats, hi, good evening. It's always a pleasure to see you in the class, Prats. Thank you for being such a nice student of mine. Okay. As I said, we are going to deal with primary purpose and main idea. Ishwar, thodi der ke le bhoob bhool jana. Okay, after that, we all will go for, la, for, for dinner. So primary purpose and main idea kya hota hai? Abhi hum chalenge, discuss karenge. And this is one basic topic, which all of you need to know. Tata hai, aapka chahe ipmat ho. Ipmat kya hai? Aapka indoor mein jo hota hai, I am indoor conduct karwata hai for 12th pass students. To... Usme bhi primary purpose main idea aega, NMAT ho aapka, SNAP ho, IFT ho, ZAT ho, CAT mein to aata hi hai. So if, if I say primary purpose and main idea, it's a basic question which every aspirant, every student needs to know. I mean, if you're an aspirant for management level exams. Cool? Okay. Pooja, good evening. Thank you so much, Pooja, for saying that. Even I love it when I come, when you come to the class. All right. So before I take you over to the main topic, the quick announcements, guys, very quick. Abhi jaise aap mein se ek bande ne bola IPMAT ke liye. So if you are pre uh, preparing for IPMAT, you can even take the CAT after two years. Get started with your preparation now. It's always early. It was, it's always good to start early, right? Now we have got a sunrise batch for CAT 22 which is starting tomorrow. 18th Oi, it started today. Sorry. Yo. Okay. And then we have got combat, which is tomorrow, of course. Sunday at noon. It's a gamified scholarship test, so please take it. It has a lot of prizes. And you even stand a chance of winning a scholarship. Okay, CAT study material notes are finally here. Tranche 1 is up and live and kicking. So you can take that and start your studies. Okay. Chaloji Ishwar. Oh, yes. 
Pooja and Pallavi. I love the camaraderie. Hi, Pooja. Hi, Pallavi. Cool. Okay, guys. So we are talking about main idea over here. I'll just take you to a blank sheet and we'll discuss something important. Okay? Um, I forgot to say Right. Okay. <laughs> yep. All right. Cool, guys. Sunana, hey. Guys, I'm writing down these two things. Everybody, be with me now. Main idea. You'll have to bear my scrawly, sharabi cockroach handwriting. No matter how hard I try, I cannot get my handwriting to improve. Or up to matlab with computer and laptop all the time, your handwriting, so I can just kiss it goodbye. The, the hope of improving it. Okay, so there is something called uh, main idea, and there's another thing called primary purpose. Uh, Ishwar, uh, Bengali mein ye puch rahe aap. Thir bhi dil hai Hindustani. So no Bengali, no Bihari. I have no idea. Just Hindustani. Hi, Swabhiman. Vivek, hey. All right. Now, main idea and primary purpose. The first thing that you need to know is why is it important? I'll tell you why. Because if you understand the main idea of a paragraph, of a passage, you can get the other questions also right very easily. Sometimes it so happens that the second, third, fourth questions are connected with the main idea. There will be one question that will ask you directly the main idea. And then there will be other questions which will be connected somehow with the main idea. Like just day before yesterday, I think, or last night, I don't remember. We did an RC passage in a plus class. And I had taken that RC passage from CAT 1999, I think. It was a long passage. But then it was fun doing it because the questions were very easy. Very easy. Why? Because we were able to locate the main idea. Once we located the main idea, the other questions became cakewalk. So that is why I firmly believe that if, if an aspirant has to do well in CAT RC passages, he needs to be able to locate the main idea and primary purpose. Primary purpose ek bar ko phir bhi chhod sakte ho, thodi der ke liye. But main idea to definitely. Okay, that is why. Now let me tell you where. Fine. Usse pehle I'll tell you what. So what is main idea? Main idea is the topic under discussion. I'll give you a big topic. Let's say it's uh, malnutrition found among children. Okay, malnutrition kya hota when you don't get enough to eat. So, malnutrition among children, there is this big thread. Aapko lag raha hai ki sare paragraphs mein, the author has spoken about malnutrition. But then the thing is, malnutrition is a big topic, just like global warming, just like emancipation of women, just like democracy. But if there is a passage, there has to be a certain aspect angle. The moment I see a passage, I ask myself, what is the aspect? Mr. Author, mudda kya hai? So if I say, ye mene bola na aapko, malnutrition, malnutrition among children. You can see that this has been mentioned many times in the passage. But then what is the mudda? So after reading the first paragraph, maybe we can understand that they are, the author is talking about malnutrition among children of African countries. Not across the globe, maybe. He is pinpointing to African countries and how children are malnourished over there. Okay. So this is, this becomes the aspect. So if somebody asks you what is the main idea of the passage, you cannot say malnutrition among children or malnourished children. No, that would become too broad. You have to say malnourished children in African countries or how the government neglects nutrition 
of children in African countries. Got it? That is called what? I mean, ye hai main idea. You are looking for that. Now, where? Milta kahan? It's very, very easy to look. You find it either in the first paragraph. Generally, kaha hota hai? First paragraph, maybe kaha. Mark my words, you will always come across it in that area. Always tell what you 95% of the times. The last four lines of the first paragraph. Ye number one, hai, and ye number six. Hai. This is your last paragraph. So you will find it either here in the first paragraph or in the last paragraph. Fine. Last paragraph may last ka again four. Otherwise, in some cases, it slips down to the second paragraph. Main idea cannot be in the third or fourth or fifth or sixth. Then that author, that writer has a very poor writing style. He should be able to capture the main idea yaha pe, ya yaha pe, max yaha pe, ya fir yaha pe. So you know what I do, Manish? Yes, Manish, author's opinion, but Lekin, you know, the mudda, the topic under discussion, Vivek. Right, Prats? So, you know, Prats, what I would do, if I read a passage, I would focus specifically on the first para and the last para. Okay? Sometimes it so happens, Prats, that we are running out of time. At least main idea ka question How do I get the main idea? Read the first para and the last para, bring them together, just a pose. When you bring them together, you will be able to see the main idea very, very clearly. Sunila, there's no lag from my end, I think. Right, Prats? Right, Manish? Vivek? So, as I said, when you are reading a passage, the moment you finish reading the first paragraph, you should pause for like 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Before you proceed with the remaining parts, and you should ask yourself over there, hey, hey, Mr. Author, Mudda kya hai? You can ask the same way. I talk to you, I read it, I read it, I read it, hey, Mudda kya hai? Kya discuss kar rao, baya tum? Okay, so here you will find it. Yeah, max, it goes down to the second paragraph, ka first part, ya phir, last paragraph. And if there's a specific question, Prats, and Shravani, and Sujit, and Manish, if there is a specific question on main idea, I bring the first and the last paragraphs together and I get the main idea from there. Is it clear now, Manish? Vivek? Seriously, guys? Music? What are you saying? Where's the music coming from? Mm -hmm. I haven't switched on anything. Hang on, hang on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is fine. Oh, boy, Azan, yaar. Khatam ho jane do Azan ko. Music is playing, music is playing. Ke pehli bar life mein tum logon ne Azan suni hai. Adi kar dete ho. I am confused. I have to tell you that I have to tell you that I have to tell you that I have to tell Absolute nonsense. What is it? You are Germany or Japan? What background noise is harsh? You are in India. We 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 are in background noise. We are in India. 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 We are in so please manage with this, everybody. Seriously. Uh, background noise. Okay, chalo. Mujhe khaa khaa tension de diya ka, music chal rahi hai. Alright. Chalo dudes. Focus now guys, focus. I request all of you and I command. Belan dikha karke, please focus. Ha, puja, seriously. Chalo, come on Saurabh. Bichara Ishwar, he's still feeling hungry and he's just trying to suppress his hunger. <laughs> ha, Prati. 
five count <laughs> oh god i have so much fun with you all i keep laughing so much thank you so much for being there in my life guys thank you <laughs> all right look here how to identify main idea questions come on everybody just focus please what is the main point of the passage oh, oh huh. what is the main point of the passage what argument is the author making? Take care. How, how the author is primarily concerned with advancing which of the following points? What is the main idea? Which of the following best summarizes the author's argument? Do you see this, guys? So if you have any of these questions popping up, Pratyu and Ishwaru, okay, you have to just think that this is main idea. Yes, you can, Mehi. You can do that. But the thing is, you have to be able to understand how much to skim and how much to skip. That is exactly what I teach in my class, right? In my plus classes. So if you come over to my plus classes, we can do a little bit of that. Now check here. This is the language. What is the main idea? The author is primarily concerned with. What argument is the author making? What is the main point of the passage? Which of the following best summarizes? In these cases, the author is asking you for the main idea. I just explained what main idea is, where to find it, why is it important, blah, blah, blah. Cool, Mehi. Understood? Proceed. I have got some practice questions also. Ishwar, are you there? Okay. Where do we look for it? I just explained. Yes, Pradyu and Pooja. Stop it now, guys. We'll have fun later. Three common places I said first paragraph, first sentence. Yeah, the first paragraph may last three lines. Okay. Last paragraph may it can be anywhere, but ideally you can find it last paragraph may aapka last ka jo four lines hota hai na, you can find it over there. Got it, Prats? Okay. One more point before I take you over to some short examples. Today, I'm not going to give you big passages. We are just going to do five to six short examples from which it will be like very, very clear what my main idea exactly is. But one thing I need to tell you before I take you over to that. Deko, those of you who have been attending my morning YT session, if you don't know, if you're kind of feeling puzzled, morning YT kya hai? It's done at 9 a.m. and we have an editorial session. Okay, on TTS and we do a 30 minute session in which mostly I show you how to take out the main idea. Fine. Now, what I'm saying is in case your passage starts with an example, like I can start the passage with this morning when I woke up, I looked out of the window and I saw at the horizon, there was a lot of smoke. I could not even make out the colors of the sky. That saddened my heart because I realized that day by day, the horizon is getting murkier. It's getting cloud, cloudier, right? And we won't be, in, uh, not far is the day when we won't be able to make out the colors, the actual colors of the sky. Not, not far away is the day when we won't be able to see the stars in the sky. Welcome to global, the era of global warming or something of that sort. So if I start the paragraph with an example, you have to understand that the example cannot be the main idea. So then, ya to first paragraph mehi example deke, the last line will be your main idea, Pooja and Prats, Pradyu. Or the second paragraph will take you over to the main idea. Clear, guys? Ye wo case hai, jis mein example rata hai, first paragraph. Right? FM is converted, Lakshay. Wow, awesome. Treat kab de raha hai? Okay, so now let's move forward to this. Message me on WhatsApp, Lakshay. I'll wait for your message. Okay, all right. Chalo, guys, all of you be with me, please. We really need to do some questions before we call it a night and go for our dinner. Okay, Prats and Pooja. Okay, read this with me. The food of hummingbirds has been a matter of much controversy. Hummingbird, humne bachpan mein padha tha, a bird which can fly backward and forward. Okay, Mahira. So, do you see the first line of this paragraph? The first line of this paragraph says it has been a matter of much controversy. Fine. All the early writers down to Buffon believe that they lived solely on the nectar of flowers. But since that time, okay, now you can start skimming Mahira. Why? Because we know that they started talking about the food of hummingbirds. 
food of hummingbirds. Do you see this, Darshit? So then you can start skimming this paragraph, although it's the first paragraph. Because we know these are details. Azara observed them on the La Plata. Okay, fine. And then Bollock in Mexico declares he saw them cat small butterflies. So, kya kya khate dekha? Kisi ne biryani khate dekha? Kisi ne chicken chilli khate dekha? Kisi ne unko mushroom khate dekha? Waterton made a similar statement. Waterton. Hundreds and perhaps thousands of specimens have since been dissected. And in almost every instance, the stomachs have been found full of insects sometimes, but not generally mixed with the proportion of honey. Many of them, in fact, do you see this over here, Puja? In fact, that means he's asserting an earlier made point, Ishwar. Many of them, in fact, may be seen catching gnats. Gnat is a type of mosquito and other small insects, just like flycatchers, sitting on a dead twig over water, darting off, blah, 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 blah. Just ask yourself, what were they discussing in this? Hummingbird, their food habits, the controversies over, over their food habit or what? Fine, then I'll take you to the next portion. Others come out just, just at dusk and remain on the wing, now stationary, now darting about the greatest with greatest rapidity, in imitating in a limited space the evolution. Mr. Goss also remarks all the hummingbirds now here. I'm going to read this portion for sure. Yeah. Why? Because this is the end of that path. All the hummingbirds have more or less the habit when in flight of pausing in the air and throwing the body and tail into rapid and odd contortions. This is the most observable in the poly polytmus from the effect that such motions have, whatever, that the object of these quick turns is the capture of insects. Why are they catapulting in mid-air? Why are they distorting and contorting their bodies? Why? Because they want to catch insects. I'm sure having watched one thus engaged pretty close to me. Got it? Now, before I take you over to the options, I want you guys to come up with your own main idea. So then when I take you over to the options, it's going to be easy peasy lemon squeezy for you. Okay, Pradyu? Chalo. Just think, hummingbirds, their flight, the way they fly, food habit, controversy related to food habit, opinion of different scholars on the food habit of hummingbirds, hummingbirds and their behavior. What exactly can be the main idea of the paragraph or the passage? Yes, guys. Darshit, Mahira, Prats, Pooja, Pradyu, uh, Mehi. Yes, Ayush, very much on the right track. Habits, okay, Prats. Hummingbird, Anuj, ye to wohi baat ho gai. Global warming, globalization, freedom of women. Women, by khali hummingbird bole to kya? Which aspect is being discussed? Which aspect of hummingbirds is being discussed? Anuj Sharma. Revise your answer, please. Yes, Harsh. Good. Yes, Sagar Rai. I'm so happy to see you in the class, Sagar Rai. You had been missing. Food habit of hummingbirds. Okay, controversy. Okay, cool, Tanu. Accepted. Pooja. Feeding habits. Yes, Manish. Good. Anuj. Yes, Anuj Sharma. Baj gaya. Shravani. Okay. I'll take you over to some options now. You take a look and decide. So the purpose of this passage hai. I'm not going to give you the purpose first. Ah, Asim, controversial. Chalo, ye kar hai. Ah, why Miss Kate, I showed you the answer. Pra purpose ka to purpose to kari lo pahle. Uske baad hi main idea pe ja sakte na. I made a boo boo. Seriously. Haan, main idea pe aenge, pehle purpose dekh lo. Purpose of the passage is what? To propose a definitive experiment. They are not giving a definitive uh, experiment over here. Ayush. Haan. I know, I know. Leak ho gaya. Paper leak ho gaya. Jan ke leak ho gaya. Wait. Haan, sagar rai. Anyway. Relax guys. I'll be more careful in the future. Hmm. I know because you guys are very, very smart. You don't miss a single thing. Hai na? 
Mm, perhaps. Okay, check this now. To propose a definitive experiment about what hummingbirds eat? No. To explain why one should feed a captive hummingbird insects and not flower nectar? The whole passage was not focusing on captive hummingbird. This is weird. We were talking about hummingbirds moving about freely also. Okay? So that is out. Option three, to critique the opinions of other scientists. Bohat sare scientists hain us mein. We'll keep this. Okay? To discuss the polytmus feeding habits. That is just one thread. And then you go to option five. To consider the opinions of scientists on what hummingbirds eat. Ishwar hai, chala gaya. Ishwar, good to see you there. Yes. Yes, Ishwar. So between two and five, now it becomes very easy for us to understand that yes, scientists, hummingbird, eating habits, food. So that was the answer for this, the primary purpose. Primary purpose, if you consider primary purpose in a big passage, Ishwar, pata hai kya karte hai? Ye to chota sa tha. In a big passage, you read the first para. You read the first line of every para. Let's say there are five paragraphs. So I'll just put it over here. Wait. Okay. Uh, one sec, guys. Hmm. I'm just showing you over here. Let's say we are talking about primary purpose of a big paragraph, which has one, two, three, four, five. Five paragraphs. One, two, three, four, five. This is not main idea. Main idea to I told you jaha rehta hai, wahi rehta hai. For primary purpose, you need the first para. Then you need the last para, that is fifth. Pahle usko nahi padh le na, take it. Then you need the first line of every para. This put together gives us the primary purpose. Understood guys? So, primary purpose, mein, since it was a small passage, obviously, in this small passage, mein, there is a different way of doing it. I'll show you how. Small passage, mein kya karte hai? you take the first four lines and the last four lines of this kind of a passage, which has only two paragraphs. Or maybe you can take the two lines, uh, the top two lines of this paragraph, top and bottom two lines, and then the top and bottom two lines of that other paragraph. So, even if you take that much, you're going to get this primary purpose. Utna hi se nikalta hai. Hai? Chalo, we are going to go over to the main idea of this. Oh, there's another paragraph. Sorry. Read this. Among the large running birds are forms, like the African ostrich, in which the absence of powers of flight is largely compensated by the specialization of the legs. For straightforward retreat in open country, nothing could be more effective. So, what are we talking about? African ostrich. Large running birds, mainly they are talking about that. And then they come up with an example, Ishwar, which says African ostrich. Ostrich kya hai, hum sab ko pata hai. Okay? In which the absence of powers of flight, they cannot fly. So how is it compensated? Specialization of the legs, long legs for the purpose of rapid movement. They can run very fast. For straightforward retreat in open country, nothing could be more effective. But another kind of adaptation is required in birds like rails. Rails kya hai? Abhi pata chalega. Which are deficient in powers of flight and yet are able to run through quickly growing vegetation with such rapidity as to commonly elude their enemies. This is speed, speed movement. This is rendered possible by the shape of their bodies which are relatively narrow and flattened from side to side so as to easily slip between the stems of grasses, reeds, wagara hote hai, bamboo reeds and all. Unke usme se, beech me se nikal karke bhaagne ke liye, rushes and similar plants. Anyone who has pursued our native land rail or corn crake with intent to capture, if you have ever wanted to capture them, will have noted how extremely difficult it is even to get within sight of a bird of this sort. Yes, Anuj Sharma, you're right. Ostrich is an example. They have taken large running birds. All right. So now just think about what the main idea can be. Okay. There's, there's another paragraph also. We are coming to this. Okay, so we started with this. And they have explained the body shape, the adaptation, the long legs and whatever. Now we have this other paragraph and uske baad question hai. Yes. So certain birds unfortunately for themselves have lost the power of flight without correspondingly increased powers of running. 
and then you can start skimming. All right, guys. So what you're going to do now is if you have to come up with the main idea, see there are two paragraphs over here. If you have to come up with the main idea, you have to check the first part of the first paragraph and you can go to the last bit of this second paragraph. So you can skim the top portion. Okay? Mehi, and go down to the last portion. You, you can read from there. Its memory is now only kept green by a few contemporary drawings and descriptions. Certain museum remains and the proverb as extinct as a dodo. Okay. A similar fate must overtake any organism suddenly exposed to new and unfavorable conditions. If devoid of sufficient plasticity to rapidly accommodate itself to the altered environment. They spoke about dodo, right? And they spoke about as extinct as the dodo. What are the first two lines of this para? Just to confirm, unfortunately for themselves have lost the power of flight without correspondingly increased powers of running and have paid the penalty of extinction. Okay, I don't need to read further. Now, let me just sum it up. The first paragraph started talking about birds, running birds gave us an example of African ostrich. And then it spoke about how their bodies are adapted. They don't have flight, but still the bodies are adapted and they can kind of run very fast and they can squeeze in here and there and escape their enemies. The second paragraph talks about certain birds, unfortunately for themselves, whatever, whatever. And the last bit again comes and talks about talks about similar phase, fate must overtake any organism suddenly exposed to new and unfavorable conditions. You see that? If devoid of sufficient plasticity to rapidly accommodate itself. Yes, Shreyansh, I love that. Exactly, Manish, I love that. Good. I'll take you over to the question now. Take it and let's see if we can spot our main idea over there. Or then we can go to the closest one. Take it. We'll have fun. And this time I'm careful. I'm not flipping the slide to show you the answer. So which of the following best states the main idea of the passage? Flightless birds sometimes develop strong running abilities. But if they don't, they may be threatened with extinction. Okay. Second, the extinction of the dodo can be traced to human causes. Okay. Third, Birds employ a variety of defenses for avoiding predators. Fourth, the African ostrich's strong leg muscles makes it well adapted to its environment. Fifth, flightless birds adapt to their particular surroundings. Let's go with process of elimination, Ayush and everybody else. But since you guys have already come up with the answer, I mean, with your main idea version, I'm sure you can spot it over there. So, which is the answer, guys? Come on. Ishwar Pal bhul gaya apni bhook and he has given the right answer. Mehi, good. Yes, Prateek. Prats, you came up with five. All right, I'll show you the process of elimination. Tanu, four. Okay. The others got one. Cool, just give me a moment and we'll see the process of elimination over here, which is extremely interesting. Option two is my first elimination. The extinction of the dodo can be traced to human causes. That was just one thread, one part mentioned. You know, that second paragraph may there can be a question. Why has the author mentioned dodo? The author has mentioned the dodo just to elucidate his point that if a bird does not adapt to the changing times or like, you know, maybe the situation he can easily become, it can easily become extinct. Okay, so extinction of the dodo was not the main idea. Option two eliminated. Yes, Prats. Okay. Option three, birds employ a variety of defenses for avoiding predators. The passage was about running birds. So this is like too broad. Right, Anuj? Birds employ a variety of defenses for avoiding predators. Too broad. Which birds? Two and three out. We are left with three options. One, four and five. 
ऑप्शन फोर द एफ्रिकन ऑस्ट्रिच स्ट्रॉन्ग लेग मसल मेक इट मेक नहीं होना चाहिए मेक इट वेल अडेप्टेड टू इट्स एनवायरमेंट फाइन द एफ्रिकन ऑस्ट्रिच वॉज गिवेन देर बट देन द मेन थिंग वॉज फ्लाइटलेस बर्ड एंड यू कनेक्ट द फर्स्ट बिट विद द लास्ट बिट द फर्स्ट बिट एंड द लास्ट बिट जस्ट अपोज टूगेदर डू नॉट पॉइंट टू द एफ्रिकन ऑस्ट्रिच दे पॉइंट टू समथिंग एल्स अडेप्टेशन flightless words and adaptation so option 4 out i am only left with 1 and 5 look at option 5 now flightless birds adapt to their particular surroundings fine they adapt to their particular surroundings but then there was the point if they do not adapt what happens go to the last paragraph sorry the last four lines i have said this repeatedly the last four lines of the passage are extremely important thank you so much mehi for saying that you made my day you made my night you made my week you made my fortnight thank you mehi god bless you i'm humbled i'm honored okay so the last three lines mehi just check they are extremely important pratik and ishwar and prats a similar fate must overtake any organism suddenly exposed to new and unfavorable conditions they are talking about survival fittest otherwise getting extinct so definitely between 1 and 5 1 is our main idea and many of you got it right flightless birds that particular category sometimes develop strong running abilities and adapt but if they don't they may become extinct so far so good guys is it clear ishwar ayush your friend's name is dodo ishwar okay cool from today i'm going to call you my dodo okay mehi ayush prats done cool okay move on to the next one answer was one okay ha huh. let's check this this is again very interesting fine the examples of protective resemblance so far quoted are mostly permanent now yahan pe na i'll show you 1 2 and 3 three paragraphs are there so we have to locate the main idea fine if there are three paragraphs mehi and prats how do we do it prats you understood now problem kya thi oh anuj thank you so much thank you all right now look here the examples of protective resemblance so far quoted are mostly permanent adaptations to one particular sort of cell kya baat kar raha hai ye protective resemblance so far quoted what is it there are however numerous animals which possess the power of adjusting their color more or less rapidly so as to harmonize with a changing environment kya mili na aunty dimag mein aa gayi hamare right so this is talking about protective resemblance you start resembling your background apne military mein bhi hota na camouflage wala dress jo so you camouflage yourself with some clothing or by changing your body color you and i cannot change our body color but many animals can so this is talking about protective resemblance are mostly permanent adaptations permanent adaptations to one particular sort of surrounding there are however numerous animals which possess the power of adjusting more or less rapidly to harmonize fine now let's go down and see what else he has taught the first two lines i'll just check some of the best known of these cases are found among those mammals and birds that inhabit countries more or less covered with snow mehi just follow me i'm not going to read this paragraph i can skim it only the first two lines i read it gives me the idea that this paragraph is going to talk about different countries mostly the cold ones if you skim you can see ireland scotland then go down allied american hare and phenomenon new hares okay cool got it all right i'm taking you over to the third paragraph the common stoat is subject to similar color change in the northern parts of its range okay so this is not talking about the animal stoat skim but in winter the entire coat okay becomes white okay okay i go down to the last four lines a similar example is afforded by the weasel oh koi conclusion to lahi nahi raha data pe data diye ja raha hai alag alag examples de raha hai 
The seasonal change in the vegetarian Irish hare is purely of protective character, but in such an actively carnivorous creature as a stoat or weasel, it is aggressive as well, rendering the animal inconspicuous to its prey. By sub, the author has finished the paragraph, sorry, the passage without giving a conclusion as such, which we can juxtapose with the first paragraph and come up with the main idea. So, in this case, obviously the last paragraph doesn't give us the main idea. The main idea is there in the first paragraph itself because the last para ends with data. Factual tone. Cool so far? Now, I'm leaving it to you guys. Come up with your main idea before I take you over to the options. Come on, everybody. Inconspicuous Manish is not clearly seen. Okay. Come on, Mehi, Ishwar, Anuj, Prats. I need some ideas. Kya ho sakta hai iska main idea? Some sentences. Even if you're not able to come up with a proper sentence, give me some words to show what your main idea is. Pradyu, Saurav, Anuj, Ishwar. All right, Sagar cool. adaptation to survive, Adapt that's like two broad paths, adaptation to survive by changing colors. Yes, yes, sort of good. Ishwar, tujhe bohat zyada bhook lag gai hai, bohat zyada. Life in cold countries, kis ke liye, Mr. Bean ke liye? Ya, uh, wo, aapka Harry Potter ke liye? Kiske liye life in cold countries? Hero hi missing hai aapke isme se. Wah! Bichara Ishwar. Waisa toh bhoop achche achche ko andha bana deta hai, bhaira bana deta hai. Woh hai na ek ad. Oof! Adjusting colors and behavior, yes. Anuj, come on. Self-protection skills. Taekwondo karta hai, jude karta hai. Haan. Mr. Miyagi ke paas ja ke karate kid ki tarah, woh seekta hai ja ke. Prats, self protection skills. Main words, mat dalo main idea. Mein. Khali side ke words tum le karke ao. Yes, Harsh, you got it. Chalo, I'll show you the options now and let's see if we can spot our main idea. Dekho ba. The Scottish hair changes its fur color. It's very easy to eliminate some options. Aap padho aur se. Animals like the stoat, the weasel, and the Irish hare are better adapted to changing environments than to unchanging ones. Option three, all animals that live in a changing environment change color. All animals, okay. Option four, certain animals change their fur color to be better predators or better at hiding. And option five, increased defense is the only reason for an animal to change its fur color. I leave it to you. Wow. Ishwar has come up with the first answer. Hmm. Ayush says 5, Ishwar says 4, Ishwar, Ayush ko dekke Ishwar ne apna answer badal diya. Achcha. Maha toh rung badalne ki baat kar rahe the. Pooja says 4, Prats 5, Pratik 4, Mahira 4, Mehi 4, all right, Mehi, Mahira, you are right. It is 4. We are left with only two options, 4 and 5. The others get eliminated. Now, what do we do when we are left with four and five? We go back and check. Is defense the only reason? Or can they also change color to be good predators? We can go back and check now. Now, oh, this paragraph, mein aa jau aap, ye jo second wala paragraph. Hai na? New hairs or whatever, take care. There are, however, first paragraph says there are, however, numerous animals possess the power of adjusting the color more or less rapidly so as to harmonize. Okay. Adaptations. It doesn't talk about defense. It talks about harmonizing with your environment. In the second paragraph, they've just given some details of this Irish hair and uh, variable hair. All right. The third one, third paragraph. Exception of this, whatever, whatever, but in winter, the entire entire coat becomes white and in that condition, the animal is known as an ermine. A similar example is afforded by the weasel. 
the seasonal change in the vegetarian Irish hare is purely of protective character. Didn't I tell you? Last lines will be pande chahiye. But in such an actively carnivorous creature as a stoat or weasel, it is aggressive as well, rendering the animal inconspicuous to its prey. Chup ke war kar sakta hai. So changing color also helps an animal in order to hunt for its food. Got it? So the last four lines still took the trophy. Factual tha, phir bhi usme wo de rakha tha, usne connect kiya with the first part that yes, animals do change color, protective resemblance, blend in with the environment and the last four lines tell you that it's not just for defense, it can be for hunting purposes also. So definitely four is the answer. Those of you who marked five, did you understand your mistake? Parafat batayye mujhe, Anuj, Saurav. Stoat is a kind of animal hash. Google karo photo a jayegi saamne. Yes, Shreyan, Shrivas, the fourth option is correct. You're right. Chal. Thikhe, we are done with this. Now we are just left with one more chota passage. Jis mein do questions hai. One primary purpose, one main idea. We'll do that fata fat. And then Ishwar, we'll go for dinner. Okay. Is mein just one paragraph, guys. And two questions. Primary purpose, main idea. European zoos of the late 19th and early 20th centuries zoo ki baat, incorporated the visual cultures of their animals. I hate going to the zoo, you know, I just remembered. Kahin bhi jate na, to sabse pehle log bolte hai, yaha ka zoo bada chha, yaha ka zoo bada chha. Mere man mein, man se ek awaz nikalti hai. Mein apne ghar mein hi sab ko dekh nuna. Mein yaha aakar ke bhi zoo hi jaun dekhne ke liye. So, I really don't like going to the zoo and all. Kab se dekh rahe, bachpan, jab se... Yaad hai mujhe jab se hum chote the, bachche the, tab se zoo hi dekhte aar hai. Anyway, let's not get distracted. Let's come over to the topic, yeah. So, European zoos of the 19th and early 20th centuries incorporated the visual cultures. Ornate buildings. Alright, Anuj. Ornate, decorated buildings. Reflections of the nation's colonial aspirations. Kya hi bolna cha raha hai? Ye banda jo hai. The, aage padhte hai, dekho shayad pata chal jai. The Berlin Zoo's ostrich. Berlin is kya? Germany ka capital. Ostrich house resemble an Egyptian temple. Oh bhai. So you mean to say ostrich ka ghar aisa banaya gaya jo Egyptian temple ko resemble karta hai. Go back to the top two lines. European zoos of the late 19th and early 20th. Oh. So basically he's trying to say just like Dubai wale pagal ho jate hai. Malls ke andar alag alag countries. There's a Dubai, Dubai mall hai ya kaun sa mall hai. Which is ke andar na? Alag alag countries ke wo pura sab banaya, pagodas banaya hai, pyramids banaya and all. To usi tarah se European zoos wale pagal ho jate the and they made their animal homes like pyramids or pagodas or something. Jis jaga ka wo creature hai wo dikhane ke liye. Thikha? Incorporated the visual cultures of the animal's native homes into ornate buildings. The Berlin Zoo's ostrich house resembled an Egyptian temple. Ah, kiswat dekho unki. With large columns flanking the entrance and scenes of ostrich hunts. Berlin's elephant. Okay. Enclosure was built in the spirit of a Hindu temple. The home for its giraffes adopted an Islamic architectural style. Oh ho. Zoos in Cologne. Lisbon. Antwerp and Budapest among others created similar exhibits. Achha, to decorated homes ki baat kar rahe for animals in the zoo. These zoos were no home for subtlety. There's a colon over there, Mehi and Mahira. Pay attention to that colon, which is very, very important, even in a big RC passage. There is no home for subtlety. Matlab, bahut conspicuous hote hain, bahut garish hote hain. Adorned hote hai. The animals they contained were exotic to most visitors. The buildings that did the containing reinforced the sensation. to building dekh kar ke, woo, 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 look at the building, andar ja ke, wow, this is the exotic giraffe. Okay. So now think about the main idea and the primary purpose and then I take you over to the question. Hi, Shreyansh. Sorry, uh, Ram. Ram abhi aya hai. Main idea, sabse pehle. Buildings in the late 19th and early 20th century, 20th century European zoos emphasized the exotic origins of the animals they housed. 
Many buildings in the late 19th and early 20th centuries European zoos were built to resemble Egyptian temples. Okay, option C. European zoos in the late 19th and early 20th centuries sought to evoke subtle emotions in their visitors. And option D. During the late 19th and early 20th centuries, most of the animals in European zoos came from outside of Europe. Uh -huh. Take a look at all the four options, darlings, and give me the main idea. I would go with process of elimination over here for sure. Ye nahi, ye nahi, ye nahi. So, jo bach gaya, wo hai answer. Ishwar, you got C. European zoos in the late 19th and 20th centuries sought to evoke subtle emotions. Bete, the clearly bola hai, there was, there was no home for subtlety. Sab kuch conspicuous tha. Sab kuch garish tha. Well adorned tha. Exotic tha. C is the first elimination. Then option D. Go to option D. Our first. During the late 19th and 20th centuries, most of the animals in European zoos, is that the main idea? Most of the animals were from, subtle means halka pulka. Dabahua, maddam. D, most of the animals, that is wordplay mehi. I generally teach that in my plus classes. Wordplay ka matlab, most laga denge, extreme kahi par, superlative, most, uh, uh, very few, okay? A large number of, almost all, yeah, all, none. Aise words de karke, they try to confuse you. So option D is definitely not the main idea, guys. Main idea was not kaha se hai animals. Main idea was conspicuous ghar and conspicuous animals. This much you can understand very well. So based on those two main points, D is definitely out. Because D does not mention homes. Got it, guys? So C and D to aise khel khatam unka. I'm left with A and B. Now between A and B, yes, many of you are going with A and A is indeed the answer. Why not B? Let's check that. Many buildings in the late 19th and early 20th centuries were built to resemble Egyptian temples. Bhai, clearly bola hai Hindu temple, Islamic architectural style, then aapka Egyptian temple, kahin pe pagoda, matlab, there were like different buildings, different type of structures. Not just Egyptian temples. So, B to is totally narrow. How can that be the main idea? Option A is your main idea, which says buildings in the late 19th and early 20th, 20th century European zoos emphasize the exotic origins of the animals they housed. Animals be exotic, ghar bhi unka exotic. That's the closest one in option one. Yes, Manish, exactly. Only Egyptian temples thodi tha. Right? Yes, Ayush. And over to the... Iska answer egi huna ha, A, right. The last question for today. The primary purpose of the passage. You'll get this very easily. Because you got the main idea. Okay? Read this now. Argue that European zoos of the late 19th and early 20th centuries should have made more of an effort to accommodate their animals' needs. Toothpaste chahiye, towel chahiye, khana chahiye, diaper chahiye, ye, or whatever needs. Okay? Option B. Describe specific ways in which late 19th and early 20th century European zoo buildings evoked the animals' home countries. Kaha ke the wo animals? Wo home countries ko evoke karta tha. Option C. Compare the buildings at the Berlin Zoo to zoo buildings in Cologne, Lisbon, Lisbon Antwerp and, the, and Budapest. Go with POE guys. I'm telling you. Go with POE. You will get it so easily. And the last one. Illustrate the importance of housing zoo animals in buildings that recreate the, their native homes. My first elimination will be A. Animals needs ka kuch nahi hai. Out. Second elimination is C. He is not trying to compare the buildings at the Berlin Zoo to other zoo buildings in other cities. No. That's not the primary purpose. Uska primary purpose had to show how animals were housed in exotic structures and those animals themselves were exotic. Okay? So we are left with B and D. Yes, Manish, you're right. Between B and D, the answer has to be B. 
they evoke the animal's home countries. Means if you went and saw an elephant in a temple-like structure, you would understand that the elephant was from India. If you went and saw a panda that was maybe housed in a, you can say a pagoda. Japan pandas, like in okay, a panda in a pagoda. So maybe you know you could connect that okay, this panda comes from Japan. Got it. So why was the purpose? Why do we eliminate the illustrate the importance of housing zoo animals in buildings? Everything is fine, but the importance. Has he mentioned even one point? Why is it important? Aisa hi structure hona chahiye? Kuch bola hai sa? No. So between B and D, D is eliminated. Perfect. We did very cool examples. Bihi tha? Ha bihi. And that brings me to the end of the session. Even I'm failing. So let's all scoot for dinner on this high note that we have understood primary purpose and main idea very clearly. Right, guys? We are going to meet again day after tomorrow for another scintillating session. Kuch dusra topic aega isme. And yes, once again, in case you feel you need more help with VARC, please join my sessions on the Plus platform. Take a subscription. Use my referral code Shabana Life. There are lots of exciting courses coming up. And you know, guys, the best thing, even if you're joining now, you have enough time, five and a half months, and my courses are designed in such a way, the upcoming courses are designed in such a way that a newcomer can cover the entire course, not the entire syllabus. I'm saying the important parts and still score 99 points, something in BARC. That's an assurance. Okay. All right, Priyanka and everybody else. Love to all of you. Take care.